For hundreds of years, merchants with valuable goods traveled across the largest hot desert on the planet. Surrounded by a harsh environment, they managed to buy and sell and create what we today know as the Trans-Saharan Trade Route. Properly described as a network of paths and not one specific trail, the Trans-Saharan Trade Route was a web of roads connecting northern Africa to its sub-Saharan neighbors. Technically, trade across Africa is rather ancient. One route, passing from the Red Sea to the Nile along the Wadi Hamat, can be traced back at least as far as 4000 BC, with the Darb al Arba'in trade route, Gedemis Road, and Garamantim Road seeming to be used in the centuries after. Commodities such as obsidian, foodstuffs, ivory, and gold were all part of the goods being moved across these early paths, often by Egyptians, Nubians, and eventually Romans. More and more roads began snaking themselves across African soil as the years ticked on and trade across the Sahara was rumbling. A trans-Saharan slave trade would be birthed along these same routes, possibly at the behest of the Garamantes, but noted by both Greeks and Romans, and later enjoyed by them as well. Nevertheless, the growing trade across Africa's upper half would only be able to boom so far. Treacherous terrain and climate, coupled with the lack of ancient technology, put hefty limits on how far and often merchants could move across the desert. That is, however, until the Berbers discovered the virtue of the domesticated camel. The earliest available evidence of camels being utilized to move goods across Africa falls somewhere within the 3rd century AD. By the 7th and 8th centuries AD, thanks to this change in travel, Trans-Saharan trade reached an all-time peak. With over a dozen main routes spanning from north to south and east to west, each region now connected was able to trade away and for material or products that were not so readily available at home. Two of the primary goods being moved from the Sahara to the west coast and vice versa were salt and gold, but other merchandise such as copper, weaponry, glass, and more would join a growing list of what African merchants could move thanks to the innovation of their helpful camels and caravans. Though there is speculation that ancient traders along the Saharan routes utilized horses and caravans of the like, there has been no clear evidence indicating such methods. And even if it were true, horses are no more equipped for travel across a scorching and dangerous desert than their human counterparts. But camels are, and they are by a long shot. Well suited for the terrain as is, Camels can also endeavor long journeys with minimal water availability, and they're quite sturdy when it comes to carrying heavy or large quantities of goods. The invention of saddles for these magnificent creatures further added to the usefulness, and the addition of caravans sealed the deal. And as travel by camel and caravan increased exponentially along the Trans-Saharan trade network, caravanserais subsequently spread along the paths like wildfires. This gave tired and desert-weary merchants and their animal helpers a place to stay as they traveled, and further provided opportunities for traders of different cultures, languages, and carrying different commodities to interact and do business. These technological advancements opened the door for rapid growth in linguistic and cultural exchanges as goods passed from hand to hand. And as the Trans-Saharan trade grew in popularity, so did the exchange of materials, such as the ever sought after gold and salt, ivory, textiles, weapons, literature, animals, as well as human slaves. Most of these involuntary servants came to northern Africa from the west, while actual goods were moved back and forth throughout the network depending on what was more readily available where. Gold, for example, 
was originally a predominant export from Sudan and was beloved by Berber traders. Sub-Saharan traders soon began swapping their gold for the North Salt, and the Western African nations quickly saw a spike in their wealth due to their overabundant supply of high-demand gold. Furthermore, in addition to the increase in wealth and physical transactions brought about by the Trans-Saharan trade, there also came a crucial exchange of culture, values, and religion. Through their travels and business in countries such as Morocco, Berber traders were growing increasingly familiar with the concept of Islam. Muslim merchants were making their own journeys and coming into contact with non-Muslim traders along the way. As the popularity of the trade network grew, so did Islam throughout the nations that it touched. Even empires and their leaders were now converting to Islam, such as Ghana alongside their Muslim Mali and Songhai neighbors. The Arabic language was additionally weaving its way through West Africa as a result, particularly among the elite and business classes of society. Islamic schools would eventually be opened as well, and historians posit that the growth of Islam actually aided the continued growth of trade. The reason lies in the fact that there was now a shared set of values and a sense of community among these strangers of different nations who could find familiarity in their shared faith. There was also the benefit of a shared language, as Arabic reached the tongues of more and more merchants, and as this shift happened, it only picked up momentum. The more Muslim traders that traveled the routes, the more travelers that were able to convert to Islam, which in turn continued the cycle and meant that trade would grow simultaneously. Marriages between locals and traveling Muslims only added fuel to the bountiful fire, and as the centuries ticked on, success seemed to be the only option for the Trans-Saharan trade. The effects of the Trans-Saharan trade route marked the growth of cities and even empires, the vast movement of goods, and the spread of the Islamic religion. Wealth of the nations utilizing the network utterly exploded, as did less happy circumstances, such as the occurrence of warfare and the trade of enslaved humans. And, as with all things, it also came to an end. The decline of the Trans-Saharan world of trade can generally be attributed to the discovery of preferred sea routes, mapped by the Portuguese. As the 15th century grew older, trade with Europe was becoming more and more valuable, and the routes they were creating outside of Africa were of increasing appeal. Although camels and caravans had made travel across the Sahara less fatal and more doable, it was still a journey of risks, and it wasn't hard to find a safer way to move goods elsewhere. And when this safer option also meant trade could be done with the well-supplied Europeans, there was little reason to say no. Warfare in Africa furthermore led to the destruction of important trade centers and widely utilized properties, acting as an almost reassurance for the masses to ditch the Trans-Saharan trade route. The Web of Roads would see a short but valiant revival when the 19th century saw a shift towards the establishment of railways, but continued hostilities and the shifting borders within the continent as the modern historic era rolled in proved too difficult to combat. Traversing the world's largest desert when one could simply move by sea or other methods was a hard sell and the needs to move goods such as gold and salt from one region to the other was not as it once was. The Trans-Saharan trade route had hit its peak and its downhill tumble. 